Welcome everybody. This is the second lecture of chapter 1 or unit 1 of physics. So, today physical quantities will be explained. What is actually physical quantities? If you want to define it, then we can write anything, anything that is measurable in this physical world is called physical quantities. So, how we will measure things and how things can be measured in a way so those quantities, those specific things can be measured in this entire physical world. They are the physical quantities. Suppose, the, suppose a human being or anything, we can, we can measure the mass of that substance or anything. So that mass is the physical quantities. We can measure length. We can measure that how loudly somebody can say it how loudly what a car is getting their horn. So this measurement, this process of measuring something, that specific particular thing is called the physical quantities. So if we divide the physical quantities, what are the physical quantities? Then this is the definition. In case of dividing these things, we'll find two categories. Number one, this physical this physical quantities can be divided into two categories. Number one, fundamental quantities and number two, derived quantities. From the definition or from the word, we understand that what is actually fundamental and what is actually derived. What is the meaning of that? The word itself expresses the definition of the quantities. And this is very easy actually. So the fundamental quantities are those that are actually independent and neutral. And they don't depend on other quantities. But other quantities or other quantities actually depend on these quantities. These are the fundamental quantities. So if we can say the exact definition of fundamental quantities we should know that fundamental quantities are neutral or independent. So we can say this is neutral or independent. Independent. And this is the opposite. Derived itself means this is dependent. So dependent on what? Dependent on the fundamental quantities. Well, to understand the fundamental quantities, we simply need to think that what are those scientists have identified seven quantities which are fundamental number one we know that length is a physical quantities length so we express this length by l and you must know after the physical quantities we should study about the SI unit so those units actually the expression of this measuring quantities so length units, you know that this is expressed by meter. And then number two, we need to know that mass. Mass is a fundamental quantity and it expresses through M and we know the unit is kilogram, which is kg. And number three, we know length, mass and then time. So, time can be expressed as T and the unit of time is second. And then, number four, length, mass, time, temperature. So, temperature, temperature can be expressed by T or theta and the unit is degree Celsius, Kelvin and Fahrenheit. I shall be explaining these things, how this meter, kilogram, second and Celsius, Kelvin, Fahrenheit scale and how things will be measured. Number five, electric current, electric current and we know this is expressed by I and the unit of electric current is ampere so can be expressed by A and number six is luminous intensity luminous intensity 
so this luminous intensity this is actually a luminous intensity is expressed by E and the unit is candela and last of all number seven is the uh, actually the amount of substance so the amount of substance which is written actually in your book it expresses by n and the unit is mole so we know that the fundamental quantities are neutral and they don't depend on other quantities but here the derived quantities such as say for example if we think about the density if we think about the density which is written on your book actually density of anything how will we measure it on the next chapter next following chapter we'll be discussing about the density we know that density can be expressed by mass upon volume so we we see that density is measured by mass and volume so mass upon volume we can see that mass itself is actually the fundamental quantities and again volume if we want to understand the volume of anything that we need to consider three different length that is length breadth and height so in case of mass it is similar but in case of volume to find the volume that we can find the length breadth and height so these three things actually the different expression of length so if you want to measure something that this is a cube and we need to know the density of the cube then we need to consider the volume of the cube and this volume can be considered from this one one length this one another length and this one this is actually the height the another length so this three length if you multiply these three lengths we will find the volume so the, hence the density is the derived quantities and again if we see the, the, the example of flow we see that there is a written force how we consider, how we measure force we measure force by multiplying two different, two different quantities we know that this is a very very crucial experiment is coming up f is equal to ma so those are starting now chapter one you must know that in the following chapters we will discuss about it it's very very important force is actually if we see that force is equal to mass into acceleration and you know about acceleration acceleration means the change of velocity upon time so by the time being if any velocity changed positively or negatively then it's called acceleration so if we need to find out how force can be subdivided into then this is mass into so acceleration means what velocity upon time time taken actually so we can we can rest taken i'll discuss it again more on the next class so velocity about time and if we further divide velocity then we must know that velocity is equal to the displacement divided by the time taken so this is the displacement so the displacement is expressed through s or even the distance is expressed by d there is a very fundamental differences between displacement and the distance i'll explain it on the next class that what is scalar quantities and what is vector quantities how scalar and vectors can be measured so in case of velocity measurement we must know that displacement over time is the expression of velocity so we can write that mass into if it is velocity we will need that displacement displacement upon time again time so if we do a simple calculations it's not a calculations changing the placement 
will find this mass into this time would be on the next level so displacement upon time square time square so how it happened because it will go on here it will be like into 1 by time so this time and this time will be exponential so this time will be multiplied this time and it will be time square and this is displacement so if you see that force is actually depending on the mass itself of fundamental quantities displacement is a length and again time is again a fundamental quantities so these three fundamental quantities smashing up with the this uh, derived quantities so in case of fundamental and derived I just show you a two example only that is uh, density and force there are loads of other examples like uh, volume density force and even when you go to the next level we will find that acceleration retardation and loads of other units which is derived so on the next level when I'll be explaining on the next episodes and next chapters this sort of derived quantities will be coming up so this is a very short class on physical quantities I know that you are uh, studying a lot and also you enjoy your study so this is very important to enjoy your own study and to know uh, what you are actually reading and what you are actually having on your thinking because when you study about physics you should increase the level of thinking procedure and to understand your topic take care stay well see you on the next class bye